I am going to be really upfront and honest that the word that I am bringing today is just a word that I needed to hear. I needed to be reminded. Um, so certainly as I read the scripture and prepared for today, I, I just, you know, th these were just encouraging words for me. And so I pray that they bless you as well. And I'm, I'm definitely uh, praying that God helps me to deliver it the way I received it in my spirit. Uh, but we're going to start with Acts chapter 19. And I'm going to start reading from the first verse of Acts chapter 19. Mm, I know what I'm missing. Just a moment. All right. I am not going to be able to share my PowerPoint with you guys. I'm so sorry. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead anyway. Acts chapter 19, verse 1 reads While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul traveled through the interior regions and came to Ephesus. He found some disciples and asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? No, they told him. <clears throat> we haven't even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then with what baptism were you baptized? He asked them. With John's baptism, they replied. Paul said, John baptized with a baptism of repentance telling the people that they should believe in the one who would come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they began to speak with other languages and to prophesy. Now there were about 12 men in all. So. This particular passage is giving the title of my message today, which is with which baptism. So as I continue our study on the acts of the Holy Spirit, today we are talking about baptism in the Holy Spirit. So first, what we read here is that these disciples who were following John the Baptist had not heard that there is such a thing as the Holy Spirit. So some of you might be thinking, okay, how is that possible? So at the time that John was doing uh, the ministry God called John to do, Jesus was also doing ministry. So there were followers of John the Baptist, followers of Christ. So Christ is imparting knowledge to his disciples, telling them about the upcoming kingdom, telling them about how he's going to establish things. And so they've been hearing about this. And then when Christ ascended, they were told that 
you should go to Jerusalem and wait for the Holy Spirit. So that's what they did. So for Paul to come across someone who didn't even know about the Holy Spirit shouldn't be that far-fetched, you know, in your mind. Like, okay, so you are following one prophet and had not heard about the Holy Spirit. So when Paul asked with which baptism, they explained that the baptism they received was from John. And so the point that I want to break down here that I think is important to know is that the water baptism that we received when we confessed, as, as Paul uh, says it here, as it's written, what baptism did you receive when you first believed? When they first confessed that, yes, we believe uh, that you know, God has a plan of salvation for us under John, they received the water baptism. And the scripture does explain that Paul baptizes them again in the name of Jesus. Now, I'll just, you know, just a little side note here. This is part of the reason that there is some debate in the Christian community about how to baptize people. It's like that you should say that we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, or we baptize you in the name of Jesus, or we baptize you. You know, it, it, it's it's like we want to make sure that when people confess, they receive the full promise. Well, I'm going to say from reading this passage again, from my understanding, is because they had not heard the gospel of Christ then they could not believe in what they had not heard, which is, you know, again, really interesting for us to try to imagine uh, sometimes living and not knowing certain things. But in the same way that I don't know everything that's happening in Russia right now, it is very easy to be alive at, at the time that something uh, important is happening and you just haven't heard the news. So, in giving the gospel about the one who would come after, and that was Jesus, they heard it, they believed it, they were baptized so that they could receive what Jesus had promised. So John's baptism was a baptism of water, which was a sign of repentance. You go down into a watery grave to say, I am dying to the old person that I was you come up out of the grave as a symbol of I'm a new person also as you know a reminder that one day you will rise from this fleshly body into our glorified bodies and we will receive the full promise of Jesus but they did the baptism again the water baptism and upon their belief baptism in Christ is to receive the Holy Spirit. And so interestingly enough, just like at the beginning of Acts, right here in chapter 19, they speak in tongues as well. And that is also something that, and they prophesy. Let me, um, let me just not you know, miss that point in the scripture. Not only did they speak with other languages, which is what tongues are, but they also prophesy. So Upon receiving the Holy Spirit, they have a gift that immediately manifests outside of just uh, languages. So that's the text that I'm using to talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So moving on to the next slide, here's what I learned. The word in Greek for baptism is baptizo. How convenient, sounds so much like English, baptizo. And with baptizo, just as I just went through, baptizo first means you get the washing. You go down and you get the washing. We're gonna get the dirt off of us. We're gonna get the sin off of us. We, we are washing it away. Yeah, Lord. We are washing it in the blood of Jesus. We are redeemed. 
by this confession. So first is the washing. And, you know, since I, I did wash my hair this morning and I'm also doing laundry, many of us understand that, you know, when you're washing something like hair or you're washing something like clothes, the, the garment or, or what you're washing usually has to be saturated for it to be clean. I, I hear you. I hear you back there in the background. Come on and preach with me. You, it has to be saturated to be clean. But when we wash our hands, we wash the outside of it. This is what gets clean. And so this spiritual concept that's being broken down with this Greek word of baptizo is this baptism, this washing is not just on the outside. Oh, yeah. The wow. word means that you must become fully wet. The word baptizo comes from a Greek word that is an action. <laughs> so when you think about washing, and baptizo, which is to overwhelm you, we're not just going to overwhelm you on the outside. We're going to overwhelm you on the outside, all the way down into the inside to become mm. fully wet, fully saturated, fully wet. As when you're like washing your clothes means that there isn't any part of that garment that's mm. dry. There isn't any room for anything else except the water that's in the garment. It gets completely saturated. That's what baptizo means. So when, when Paul makes this expression of with which baptism, it is a, an outward direct correlation to that's wonderful that you believe. You got washed on the outside. Let's get you filled on the inside. Mm -hmm. And that is the baptism that believers receive today because there is no, no, no parting in, in the gospel. There's no separation. We receive the full gospel of Jesus. So when we are baptized and we do the water baptism as a sign, we receive the Holy Spirit baptism on the inside mm -hmm. and and that's also part of the debate is like well do you need the water can you just get the spirit baptism and i would definitely be on the side of the scripture that we confess with our mouths we believe and we receive the water again is a sign it is a symbol. The water baptism is a ceremony. It is to show people very much like a wedding is to show people that I am making a commitment to this man. I am confessing before witnesses that I'm going to be the wife of this man and be faithful to this man. Baptism in water is very much the same way. It is a show, a symbol of the commitment that you make. And it's a, it's a wonderful symbol to be reminded that you're washed from your sins, but you're not just wet on the outside. Hallelujah. You are filled with the spirit on the inside. Amen. So, so I made my own point here of capable and capacity. So when you read the gospel, what you find out in Jesus's ministry is that his teaching about who he was, what he came to do, and the confession of your mouth to believe makes you a capable vessel. Capable. Hmm. So in the scripture, sometimes you might read that it is uh, worthy, but he makes us fit. He makes us proper. He makes Ooh. us, uh, uh, he fashions us to be the right container. The, the scripture tells us that we are a vessel for the Holy Spirit. So in Jesus' teaching, he makes us capable. Hmm. And then when we receive the Holy Spirit, he gives us capacity. Hmm. Huh. So when Jesus was teaching that you can't put 
old wine, excuse me, new wine into, uh, let me get it right. I'm too excited. Excuse me. You cannot put new wine into old wine skins. First, you must make the vessel capable. So you take your new wine and you put it into a new wine skin. And then when that wine goes inside of us, then we have capacity. Because see, new wine skin has elasticity. It can expand. It, it can hold what's in it. Uh, in, in the New Testament, when Jesus was giving that example, he said, if you put new wine in old wine skin, it will tear at the seams. It will not be capable of holding it. So the gospel and salvation and that process that, that God is, is working through us with our confession and then with the, the gift of the Holy Spirit is to both make us capable and then to also give us capacity. Mm. We're able to then perform what mm. God wants to perform through us. Mm. Hallelujah. So the scripture reminds us, let me turn to this word, Ephesians chapter five, verses 15 through 18. Ephesians chapter five. Oh, that's Galatians. I got to keep turning. Ephesians chapter five. Verses 15 through 18 reads that we should pay careful attention then to how you walk, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time because the days are evil. So don't be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. And don't get drunk with new wine, which leads to reckless actions, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Why do I give that particular passage? Because we are warned that we are in a place where the time and the days is a season. Is, they are evil. They're evil. So we don't want to be foolish. We want to understand what the Lord's will is. We want to be vessels that carry what God puts inside of us. So that's the reason why we have to not only be made capable vessels, but we have to keep having the capacity to receive what God is giving us the capacity to understand God's will. For those of us who've been walking this walk for a while, which, which is just mind blowing to me now that, that I have been uh, confessing Christ for many more years than the years I lived without confessing Christ. But, but for those of us who have been walking this walk for a while, you realize that with, with all of your growth, you kind of expand a little bit. You keep understanding what the Lord's will is. And that's why you need the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. That's the difference in the covenant that God made with us in, in, in the new covenant. That's the reason why you see the example of people in the Old Testament not being able to be faithful because see, they would just get washed on the outside. Oh, mm -hmm. glory. I'm remembering how Moses was like, Lord, I want to see your face, but he was not a capable vessel to be able to see God's face. God was like, I have to just kind of pass by you. Mm -hmm. I, I just kind of have to give you a little piece of who I am. You're not able to carry the full weight of who I am as God. Can you imagine now? Can Are you getting a picture of what the death of Jesus and his resurrection, the ripping of the veil in the temple, what it actually did in the life of the believer. When I say that we now have capacity, hmm. we are able to contain, hallelujah, God. Glory. Let me move to Romans. Let me move to Romans chapter 15. 
That is right after Acts. And the verse is 13. Oh, my pages are sticking. Hold on. And again, we're reminded by Paul, the writer, the same one whom we are reading about in Acts. And he writes to the Romans, now may the God of hope fill you with all mm -hmm. joy and mm -hmm. peace in believing so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. That right there is just rich with a bunch of wonderful words. It's like that word about filling, not the same word as baptism, but it does give you the same action of what it means to be overflowed with the Holy Spirit, to be overwhelmed by the Holy Spirit. It's like, may God then not only just put the Holy Spirit in you, but you can be filled with all hope. You can be filled with all joy and all peace in mm -hmm. believing that same confession that gave you the redemption for your sins now has given you access to be filled with all joy. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. To be filled with all peace, shalom, wholeness, lacking nothing because you're mm -hmm. saturated you're saturated with the Holy Spirit Ooh. and there's just no room for nothing else. Hallelujah. Oh, no now, room for nothing oh, else. Now. You can wow. be filled with this, overflowing with this. The gospel um, is teaching this principle that, that King David was talking about when he was like, you know, fill my cup. You want to be filled with God to the point of splashing out on other people. Mm. Let, let mm. God run over on mm. them as Natasha Cobb uh, Leonard is her name now. Song goes, let, let it just, you know, run out over them. You want to run over with the Holy Spirit. Last slide. Wrapping this up. So the baptism of the Holy Spirit is I just got kind of on a roll, people. I don't normally do alliteration like this, but I thought of a bunch of P words, so here we go. Huh? The baptism of the Holy Spirit is first promised. This particular scripture uh, passage in, in Acts chapter 19 reminds us what, of what happened in Acts chapter 1, where God reminds his followers that you are going to Jerusalem and you will be filled with the promised Holy Spirit. Go there and wait. It's promised to us. Second point is it is powerful. The Holy Spirit and the baptism of it is powerful. Being that saturated and filled with God means then you are able to move in the power of God. See, see, I, I have to renew my mind and tell myself, hallelujah, I'm not the one giving activity to these limbs, hallelujah. Mm. God is giving activity to these limbs. God is using this voice right now that's proclaiming this gospel. The power of the Holy Spirit enables us to live and move and breathe and have our being. Third mm -hmm. point, baptism of the Holy Spirit is permanent, meaning God says in his word that he will always be with us. David, when you read the Psalms, you will read where David prayed, God, don't take your spirit away from me. God, don't leave me. But as new covenant believers, God has said he will never leave us. He actually said, my name is, I never leave you. <laughs> Emmanuel, hmm. God with us is my name. That is the nature of my character. Oh, come on, Bible scholars. Y'all remember when God says, what is your name? 
-hmm. It's not just something they called you. Mm -hmm. Your name is who you are. Your name is your reputation. So when God says, I am the one who will never leave you, the Holy Spirit is permanent. Mm -hmm. So so what do we do mm -hmm. as believers? We just keep trying to get in touch with what God gave us. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we might feel like, oh Lord, I have poured out a, a whole lot and I need to be filled up again because there's nothing wrong with restoration. There's nothing wrong with rest. I just want you to know that you will never be empty. Never be empty. So if you feel like, as we many times do, feel like, oh, I don't think I have anything left. You need to know there's always something. There's always something in the tank. There's always something on the inside of you because the Holy Spirit is a permanent feeling. The, the Christian word that we use, which I have not found it used in the Bible is indwelling. We are permanently indwelt by the Holy Spirit, uh, but that's our understanding of what these words mean. So you're not gonna find indwelling in the Bible or the, the language in that way. It's the way we understand the language that says, the Holy Spirit is indwelling. Fourth point, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is prenuptial. We as a bride will one day see our bridegroom and be joined in a marriage that means that we will forever be with God. And you can read about that in Ephesians chapter one, verses 13 through 14, that states that the Holy Spirit was given to us as a down payment on an inheritance. It is exactly the kind of language of what we mean when we say that we are engaged to our intended. We are engaged to the person we're going to marry. That person is coming for us. To, to seal that covenant of marriage. It's, it's a promise that is, is going to be fulfilled. So unlike human beings who can break engagements, God will not break an engagement with his church. It's a permanent promise that he made a down payment, Amen. put something on the inside that he's coming to get one day. Amen. Hallelujah. Fifth point. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is performing his perfect work. So when you read in Psalm um, 138, verse eight, the psalmist is writing, you know, God, don't abandon the work that you started on, on me. But in the New Testament, so sorry for misspelling Philippians, y'all, but in the New Testament, Philippians 1 and 6 says that God is going to be faithful to complete the work that he started in us. So, so we don't speak a language that says, God, don't abandon your work. We speak in faith and in confidence because of the permanency of the Holy Spirit that you are going to do what you said you're going to do, God. Last point. And I, and I have to read this scripture because I, I just, I love it. It's just beautiful. It's in Colossians. The baptism of the Holy Spirit gives us purpose. Colossians chapter one, beginning in verse nine. And I'm going to read all the way to verse 23, not 15, 23. So in the Holman Christian Standard Bible, it reads, for this reason also, since the day we heard this, the confession, or excuse me, the proclamation of the gospel and teaching the gospel, because I'm sorry, I just had to think about that for a little bit. From the day we heard this, we haven't stopped praying for you. We are also asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom 
and spiritual understanding. That's underlined in my Bible because that's something else I can be filled with. All knowledge, the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work and growing in the knowledge of God. Again, emphasizing that point of you have capacity as a Christian. May you be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for all endurance. I needed that word for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the father who has enabled you to share in the saints inheritance in the light. He has rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of the son he loves in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation because by him, everything was created in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible, whether thrones or dominions, or rulers, or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and by him all things hold together. He is also the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that he might come to have first place in everything. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him. Are we not like Christ? And through him to reconcile everything to himself by making peace through the blood of his cross, whether things on earth or things in heaven. And you were once alienated and hostile in mind because of your evil actions. But now he has reconciled you by his physical body through, the, through his death to present you holy, faultless, and blameless before Amen. him. Amen. If indeed you remain grounded and steadfast in the faith and are not shifted away from the hope of the gospel that you heard, this gospel has been proclaimed in all creation under heaven, and I, Paul, have become a minister of it. That last sentence there is where I get purpose comes from the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. It is your purpose to show forth this glorious gift this, what cannot be imagined of the visible and the invisible things that God has created. That's your purpose. It's the reason you are here. Mm. And one day you will be reconciled in a spiritual body for the reason that you were created. Mm. Hallelujah. Baptism of the Holy Spirit was a gift to us so that we might be found lacking in no good thing. That we might be filled with God. That we might walk worthy of the calling. That we might understand God. That we might become joint heirs in the inheritance. And I'm going to close it right there because I could just keep preaching to myself on these points because I need to be reminded that my hopes and my dreams and what I think that I should be doing with my life, they cannot, when I confess Christ, be my thoughts alone. I have to renew my mind to the will that God has for my life. And he's doing something through all of us in this realm at this time 
it's a reason why you exist. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, I always have to remember with which baptism did I confess? It's, it's not just um, only when the times are good, only when I feel happy, but it's in mm -hmm. all of the seasons of our lives. Mm -hmm. It's so that I might be reminded that I need to be that filled with God, that there's just no room for anything else except belief and walking in obedience to what God has told us to do. So if you are not a believer in this God, reach out to Commission Ministries. We want to pray the prayer of faith with you. You can confess in this God of the universe that created everything. And if you are a believer, I want you to remember that the only thing that we are encouraged to do in the Bible is to stir up what God has already put on the inside of us. Mm. So that's the reason why we mm. have to meditate. We mm. have to keep reading this. We have to keep um, eating and, and supping and drinking it. We have to be reminded of the precious precious gift that God's given us and it is able to overcome the world because it has the gates of hell Jesus said will not prevail against this belief this confession this walk that we are doing in Christ Jesus amen y'all be blessed and we'll see you next time on commission ministries